everyone, Anne from the Sussex Handmade Soap Company here and today I want to talk to you about clays. But not just any clays, these are found in bio clays, which are without any shadow of a doubt my favourite clays ever. And there are a couple of reasons why they are my favourite clays ever. The first is that the product itself is fantastic. I love the quality of it, I use it in my soaps, and I just absolutely love the quality of the product. I think it's a really high quality product. It is available in lots of different kinds of varieties of clay, and it does everything I want it to do. The second reason is not so much actually about the clay itself, it is about the people who run the company. It is actually based in Portugal and found in Bio is run by two lovely people, Marta and Alex, and it is a small family business and I love supporting small family businesses. Um, they really kind of make you feel like a person rather than just, you know, another random customer. And this was first demonstrated when I placed my second order ever with them. And it had been a good few months since my first order, but I placed my second order and it came through. And on the packing note was just a little note from Alex saying, thank you so much for your... Uh, for coming back to us or for your second order or something, something to show that he had remembered who I was or, you know, had it on file. Either way, it doesn't matter. And there was a little smiley face. And that just kind of made me feel a little bit kind of valued by them because you don't get that kind of personal touch with every company. So it was so nice to have that from them. The second thing I have quickly learned is that they are very knowledgeable about what they sell. Um, they only sell clays, they don't sell other products as well and because of that they kind of know a lot about clay and if you go to their website, which I will be popping up for you to see, you will see that it is full of information about the clays, about how to use them, about how to store them, about how they are sourced and everything you could kind of really want to know about the clays. And I want to say as well that this video, I actually sent an email over to Alex and I said, would you mind if I do a video on your clays because I really like them and I want to tell other people about them. And he replied and he said, yes, of course you can. And he did say that he would send me the sample pack free of charge. So I want to make that clear that I have been gifted the sample pack from Alex. Um, if I hadn't been gifted it, I would have still been doing this video because I have most of their clays actually already. There was a couple that I didn't have. I don't think I had the white kaolin and I don't think I had the Moroccan Rasool, but I had all the other clays anyway already. But Alex kindly sent us the sample pack so that we could do our feature on all of the clays that they offer. So if you go to the Found in Bio website, you will find Marta and Alex's story. And Marta does talk about how she first learned about clays from her grandmother and kind of got into them then. Um, and how they then travelled all around kind of testing the clays, visiting the sites where their clays are extracted from and really learning about the product. And you will also find on their website there are blogs that Alex has done and they will give you recipes and ideas for ways to actually use use the clays as well because although we are using them in soap there are so many different uses for these clays as well and Alex has popped up some recipes and ideas of ways that you can use the clays if you're not going to be using them in soap which let's let's face it is probably one of the lesser known options for using clay. I think clay is much more kind of associated with face masks and wraps and cleansers and things like that. But yeah, the website is full of recipes and ideas for that. There is also handling tips on there, such as not to allow your clays to come into contact with metal because that can um, affect the clay and how, um, what's the word, how not useful. It can affect the clay and its properties and how well it works on your skin. There are also usage tips for how to actually use the clay. Um, right down to Marta talking about the kind of food grade clays that they offer that can be taken internally and help with things like indigestion and IBS and things like that. Things that I have no idea whatsoever about so can't tell you about but if you look on their website there is loads of useful information on there. 
the other nice thing is that even though they are based in Portugal, they do free shipping to most of the world. And they definitely do free shipping to us here in the UK. And it is generally pretty quick too. Before Brexit, I was getting my orders in around about a week. Now it is slightly longer, but they're still coming through pretty quickly, which is fantastic. And you can't complain when it's free shipping either. Um, so that is another bonus to this company. So what I'm going to actually do now is show you what is included in the sample pack because this can be purchased online if you want to just kind of try out all of their clays and see which one works best for you. They also sell larger packets of the individual clays. My favourite is the Dead Sea clay uh, which comes as a powder and I haven't been able to find it as a powder anywhere else. So my Dead Sea clay powder always comes from Found in Bio. So let's open up the packet and show you what is included. So the first thing you get is just a little wooden spoon because like I say you shouldn't be using metal utensils with clay so they have included just a little wooden spoon to help you. I have already opened this and used it um, because we made some soaps earlier. But this is the Dead Sea clay here. So their Dead Sea clay originates from Israel obviously because that is kind of where the Dead Sea is. It is Israel and is it Jordan? Israel and Jordan, the Dead Sea? Wayne's just checked for me. Yes, it is Israel and Jordan. Just had to double check that. <laughs> um, so this is a really mineral rich clay and it is great for oily or acne prone skin. And this is one of my favourite clays to use because I do kind of get the oily, acne prone skin. So this is definitely one of my favourites to use just as a mask on my skin. Um, obviously it can also be used in masks, it can be used in wraps and it can be used in bath bombs as well if you want a natural colour. So this here is the Dead Sea Clay. Also included in the packet is, what is next? the red clay. Now the red clay originates from Morocco and it is one of the clays that is often used in spas and spa treatments. It is a lovely clay and it is great for normal and mature skins and dry skin too. Oh look it kind of matches my hair. Red clay. Yeah so that there is the red clay that is included. Next we have got the pink clay which is also obviously sometimes called French rose clay and this is one of the mildest clays that they offer and because of that it is great for all skin types. If you have got mature or sensitive skin it is a really good clay. It is also good for kind of the more sensitive skin types too. And the added bonus, bonus? The added bonus with the pink clay is it can even be used as like a natural blusher if you are looking at more natural ways of doing makeup. And because of its versatility, this is used a lot in creams, in scrubs, in wraps, in masks, and in soap if you are like me. So, so many different uses for the pink clay there. Next we have got Moroccan Rasool clay and this is a very mineral rich clay. It is formed from um, volcanic lava and it is full of minerals. It is good for use on normal to sensitive skin and it can actually also be used as a shampoo according to Found in Bio's website. I'm not quite sure how you use it as a shampoo but I think that sounds like a lot of fun so I'm actually going to research that a little bit more and then I might actually just try and use it in place of shampoo and see what it does and how it turns out because reading that got me really really curious as to how you use it. So I am definitely going to have a go at doing that with the aerosol clay. Next in the packet is some green clay and this originates from Europe and this clay is fantastic for absorbing oil. It has got great oil absorption properties. For this reason obviously if you have got acne prone or oily skin then this would be the clay to use. And again you could incorporate it into a mask or you could incorporate it into a body wrap or you could incorporate it into kind of a scrub or a cleanser. It is another very versatile clay. 
And the last clay we have got is the white clay. And this is great for normal to sensitive skin and it can help with a dryness and acne and rosacea. So another nice little clay to have there. And as well as the clays, they have also included, obviously the spoon and a little peg to kind of uh, clip your clays shut if you need to. And also just a kind of little leaflet that just gives you a little bit of information on how to store the clay, gives their website, and it gives you a very simple instructional leaflet on how to turn the clay into a simple clay mask that you can use on your skin. So yeah, a lot of stuff kind of included in there. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the actual weight is on these individual pouches, but there is more than enough to actually kind of just test in soaps or other body products if you are not using them for soaps. Um, I have already tested these clays in our soaps and these packets are still pretty much full. Um, so I am going to run through some footage that we did a little bit earlier now, showing you us using these clays to colour our soaps and we're going to show you how they turn out and we're going to use different ratios as well. So we're going to use a higher amount of clay and a lower amount of clay and just show you the colour differences that you can achieve naturally with these five different clays from Found in Bio. So now I've told you a little bit about the different clays that we are going to be using, I'm actually going to show you how they can be used to colour soap. I've already made up a batch of soap and brought it to emulsion because this is more about using the clays to colour than the actual soap making. And we are going to add the clays to each portion of soap. And the ratio we are using is the equivalent of one teaspoon per pound of oil. I'll also be showing you with one tablespoon per pound of oil, but we're going to begin with one teaspoon. So I'm going to add the clays into the first three portions. We've got six clays to add in total, but we need to do them in two separate uh, goes because we only have three small jugs. So the first clay is the Moroccan Rasool clay, and we're going to add that into our first portion. The second clay is the red clay, and we're going to add that into this one here. And the third clay is the pink or rose clay and we're going to add that one into this portion here and we are then going to use the stick blender to bring them from emulsion through to a light to medium trace. And now all I'm going to do is pour them into our cavity mould that we are using today. So going in firstly with the Rasool clay. And I'm going to leave this spot next to it empty because I want to be able to pop in the uh, soap that is done with the equivalent of a tablespoon of Rasool clay. This is the teaspoon and we're going to leave that blank for the tablespoon. So in this cavity here, I'm going to pour in the red clay. And then we're going to pour out the pink clay into this cavity here. And now I'm going to go and refill my jugs and we're going to do the next three colours. And now we are repeating the process with the other clay. So we've got the green clay going in. We have got the white clay going in and we have got the Dead Sea clay going in. And now as before, we are going to mix these in using the stick blender, bringing it to a light to medium trace. Now, because we've been working with so many clays in one go, these really are starting to thicken now. So without any kind of further time wasting, I'm just gonna pull the mold straight back in and get these poured out. So we're gonna go in first with the green clay. 
And there are still some visible flecks of clay in here. And that is because I didn't manage to kind of get it incorporated as quickly as I would have liked. Um, to me, I am not bothered by the little flecks of clay. If you're bothered by them, then potentially adding the clay into a lye, into the lye water is an option. Um, that can help the clay flecks to be less obvious. But to be honest, if you're just making a soap with one or two kind of coloured clays, you're going to have more time to actually kind of mix it into the oil before it thickens. So the clay flecks may well be less obvious anyway. It's only because I'm working with six different clays that it gets a little tricky. And I've just realised I have popped that one in that cavity when I meant to put it in there, but not to worry, we'll go with a different design. I'll leave the ones underneath blank now, just to kind of mix it up a little bit because I made a mistake. <laughs> right, Dead Sea Clay, just kind of mixing it before I pour it to bring it back to being a little more fluid. And now we'll go in here with the Dead Sea Clay. And here we have all six soaps now poured with the different coloured clays. These are, as I say, are equivalent of one teaspoon per pound of oil. I'm now going to mix up some more soap and I'm going to pour in the equivalent of one tablespoon of clay per pound of oil, just so you kind of get an idea of the different colours that you can achieve by using slightly less clay or slightly more clay. I am not going to go through the whole process of showing you what we're doing again because it will be identical to what we have just done, the only exception being that we will be adding slightly more clay. So I'm going to not worry about showing you all that because it will be boring and I'm just going to cut to when we are filling the tray up with the new soap butter. So we've now made up some more soap and we've done exactly as we did before, six portions, the only difference being that we added the clay at a ratio of one tablespoon per pound of oil. And you can see the difference already. So here we have got the Moroccan Rasool clay at one teaspoon per pound of oil. Here it is at one tablespoon. And then the same with the red clay here and here. Pink clay is these two here. And then we have got green clay, one teaspoon, one tablespoon, white clay, and dead sea clay, one teaspoon, one tablespoon. So you can see that just those little kind of changes with ratios of clay amounts has so far given some very different colour results. We're going to wait 24 hours now and then we're going to pop them out and show you the final colours that they have turned. So we're back 24 hours later. Apologies if I look or sound a little out of breath. I have been attempting online gym workouts, which my body is not very used to. <laughs> so we have unmolded the soaps now, and I'm just going to run through the colours, how they've turned out, um, and yeah, just show you what colours we have achieved with the clays. So I will try and label them all as well so you've got a quick reference guide, but I will quickly run through them. So the first two are the Moroccan Rasool clay. This was the one teaspoon per pound of oils and this was with one tablespoon per pound of oils. The next two colours are the red clay, again, one teaspoon, one tablespoon. Then we have got the rose clay here, one teaspoon, one tablespoon. Down here we have got the green clay, one teaspoon, one tablespoon. To be honest, um, the green is not coming through as much as it usually does and I think that is probably just because I didn't really mix it enough. I think in hindsight I should probably have mixed it up just a little bit more because there are lots of flecks of the clay left. And I think if I had just mixed it in a little bit more thoroughly, we would have got more of a green colour and less specks of clay. Then we have got the one teaspoon and one tablespoon of the white clay. And that kind of just kind of brightens and whitens the soap batter. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it just slightly whitens it, I find. Lastly, we have got 
the dead sea clay again a teaspoon and a tablespoon and that gives a really nice kind of pale grey colour so that is the test of the clays um, and I think we've got a really nice palette of colours here and you can also see that the more you kind of experiment and the way you change ratios of how much clay per pound of oil, you really can actually create some very different shades. Um, so you can absolutely play with them a little bit more. You don't have to stick to a teaspoon and a tablespoon. You could try one and a half teaspoons or even less if you wanted a very pale colour. So clays are a lot of fun to play with and that is why I like using them as natural colourants. So now the last thing I'm going to do with the clays today, in case you can't guess by the fact I've changed my top into an old top, is show you how to use the clay just as a face mask. Because you might be watching this video going, I love the idea of using clays but I don't make soaps, I don't make cosmetics and I just want to use the clay. It is really, really easy. Here in this little pot I have got the red clay because I liked the idea of using the red clay. And I've popped one tablespoon of red clay with one tablespoon of water which I believe is slightly less water than they recommend but for me this is kind of the consistency I like. I have just mixed them together and now I'm just going to pop it on my face as a very simple quick and easy face mask and I'm probably going to make a mess which is why I changed my top. So just carefully popping it on my skin. Probably should have taken my makeup off first, but I didn't, so there we go. And you want to avoid the eye area and the neck. So I'm just gonna continue getting this on my face. There we go, beautiful. And as you can see, I've still got plenty left in the pot. That would be more than enough to do kind of like my arms or my back or, you know, whatever I sort of fancied doing. Um, it's a nice thin layer, it's not too thick. Now I just have to shut up for sort of 10, 15 minutes while it dries and try not to smile. So I'll be back when it's dry and then I will show you me probably taking it off and show you my skin afterwards. So it's been about 15 minutes and as you can probably tell from my slightly muffled voice the clay has now dried nicely on my skin. I'm now just going to go and kind of rinse it off, gently exfoliate my skin and then I will come back and show you the final results. <laughs> Smile! Mm, cracking! <laughs> So back again, um, washing it off upstairs. I thought I'd got it all off, but actually looking in the camera, it appears I missed a couple of bits, so I will have to go back and have another go at them in a minute. Um, but that is the clay mask. And obviously I've got a little bit of reddening on some of my face. That is completely normal when using clay masks. But my skin feels lovely and soft and exfoliated. Yeah, just really, really soft. So that is an idea of something you can do with the clays if you don't kind of make soap or make other kind of cosmetic products. It's just a really quick, easy, nice way to use the clays. Um, one thing I also want to point out as well, I meant to say it earlier but I forgot, um, the MSDS and SDS documents for the clays if you are looking to sell cosmetic products are all easily obtainable from Alex. Um, they don't actually have them on their site to download, but do not let that put you off because if you send Alex a quick email, um, he will get all the, doc the documents over to you. And I think it took less than 24 hours for him to get the documents to me the first time I requested them. So don't be put off by the documents not being readily available to download because he doesn't keep you waiting for them or anything like that. So yeah, I thoroughly recommend checking out found in bio just here. Um, fantastic service, fantastic clays and you can't really ask for anything other than that can you? Uh, that is today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it a little bit informative and we will see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.